Hey everybody, I'm Doug and this is Doug Does Tech. Today we're building out USB device controls using Intune and Defender for Endpoint. Recently it came up in my environment that I needed to design some policies to control what USB devices got plugged in and used in my environment. And specifically I wanted to block the ability to write to any except for the approved USB devices in my environment. So um, that's what we did, that's what we designed. So I'm gonna show you how we got to that policy and show you some options for how to configure that. I think it was a helpful uh, exercise for me to go through and uh, if it helps you out, awesome, let me know. So that being said, let's hop into it and design some USB device control policies. All right, so we're gonna begin with the end in mind and I'm gonna show you now exactly what I built out in my environment here. So uh, I have a laptop that's sitting next to me that I'm re remote desktop into. Uh, and essentially what I designed is a policy on Intune that can come in and control what USB devices plug in and are allowed to, in this case, write to. We can also do one that says, hey, you can't even plug in these storage devices. So if you don't want the ability to have a read from one of these devices or read from any except for the approved device list, we can do that. So uh, this USB here is the you know non-approved device and I'm able to plug it in and I'm gonna be able to read from it in here, right? So if I come into storage or yeah, here, uh, I'm able to come in and open up these Sentinel documents and read from it. But if I have something like this where they've got the Death Star plans, you'll notice here, if I try to write to it, transfer to it, it's blocked, right? However, this device, the R2-D2 device, is allowed to be plugged in. And so if I go and now switch over to that, plug that device in, you'll see the same experience. I'm able to come into it. However, the Death Star plans can be transferred to that. That's an approved device in my environment. So that's essentially what we're building out here and what we're gonna design. Um, pretty easy to hop into it. There's a lot of different ways. Uh, the way I landed on doing it is going to be using device control inside of Defender for Endpoint and Intune. So this is essentially what we're gonna be building out here. We're gonna be using some reusable device settings and create one policy to say, deny removable storage devices, CD-ROM uh, and, you know, WDV devices, I don't even know what that means. Uh, I forget the acronym there. I should probably remember that, but it is what it is. Um, so that's one policy that we're gonna be designing in reusable settings. And then we're gonna use another reusable setting to control authorized or approved devices and put into that these areas. We're gonna wrap all of that up with a device control policy in Intune and then push it to our devices. And then the device, the vendor antivirus is controlling that with the device control policy. So that's what we're building. Um, pretty easy to kind of think about how to design it. Let's hop into it. Let me show you what I landed on as the policies that we're going to do here. So um, here we are in Intune in a, a new lab environment. I'm actually going to pull up a second lab environment just so I can make sure I'm showing you the exact settings that I used in my other lab. Uh, and then I'll show that to you. But what we're going to start with is a new reusable device setting here. All right, so we're gonna start with the deny and pop in the deny removable storage. Next, we need to come into the device control and add in a uh, configuration for removable storage in this. So I'm gonna add in three of them and do separate configs for each of them. So uh, in this case, this is going to be my any removable storage one. So I'm gonna come in here, go to the name, pop in any removable. And for the primary ID, we're gonna grab the uh, removable storage media. So we're gonna make three policies targeting those different uh, you know, storage devices here. So removable media storage, that's one that we're gonna do. We're gonna do CD-ROMs and then uh, Windows portable devices as well. All right, so that's setting one. We're gonna save that and we're good to go. Next, let's add in our Windows portable devices. That was the acronym I couldn't remember. And pop that in here. Okay. Next, let's grab CD-ROM devices because sometimes these devices are gonna come up and show in here. And 
you know, the, the great copy paste battle of pulling this content in. The name doesn't really matter on this. Whatever you put in here is not uh, super critical, but the primary IDs, these are set in stone. Uh, they are from the Microsoft documentation that we can do that. And so that's, that's our deny group. So we're gonna use this removable setting area and then essentially program that in. Now, for the rest of the devices, what we need to do is a new removable uh, or reusable storage settings. And this is gonna be our list of approved devices. But what's nice about doing it this way is that you don't have to go in, or the reason why I landed on doing it this way is because this is a lot easier for me in the, historically to configure multiple times in here instead of having to hop into my individual policies and possibly break something. You can do this all in XML, and I've done it in XML before, and it was just it was too much to manage. This, to me, is a lot easier to come in, put in my devices, come in and add in all of those, and as this list of devices grows, we can we can pop in here and use this all right so in this case we're going to come in and these are going to be our authorized devices now and so you can add to this so what we need to do on here is grab a device and put it into here so um this is going to be my uh r2 d2 all right oh and then essentially what we're gonna be grabbing from this is the instance path ID. So the instance path ID allows us to come in and grab different information about a device and pop that into here and say, this is the specific approved device on this. So um, that's gonna be how we design this and put this in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that in here. Um, real quick though, for those that aren't aware, to get that information about it, we can get to it a bunch of different ways in our environment, but it's essentially if we're in um, here under hardware, we can see here's that uh, MimoBot device or my R2D2 device. And if I go into the properties and details on it, and it should be under device instance path, that's essentially where we're getting this information of what to plug into there. So that instance path ID is coming from here. There is other ways that you could scope this in there. I'm just specifically grabbing this particular device and that instance path ID. But there is different ways you could do it of like manufacturer ID and you can use different components of here. So do what's right for you, test some different scenarios. Um, a couple of my SanDisks that I've tested with were all approved by adding the instance path ID. So I needed to come in and grab like, um, I think I had to grab serial number or something like that also and add it in there. Uh, when we were doing one of the policies for some of my SanDisk devices that I was using. But try with it, see if it works, see if there's uh, additional USB devices that you know get in there, um, test it. Lots of testing is needed to make this work here. But that's, that's where we're getting that. Um, the other place that we can get it is also gonna be your security um, center, right? So this con information is also available inside of like Defender for Endpoint. Uh, or the security portal from Microsoft. So if you wanted to also get this data from somewhere else, we can come back into uh, reports down here. And I think this instance path ID is it's available via KQL and I'll, I'll put it into like the doobly-doo of like what it is in there. But in this device control report, you should be able to also see some of this device instance path ID information down here uh, if it shows up properly, which is in my lab. It is not showing up here. Ah, I think, uh, uh, no, it's not showing the instance path ID. That's, uh, that's kind of a bummer here. So um, yeah, it should be in here. I'll work on the KQL and put it into, there should be a way to grab that content in it. Uh, that device ID should be where it shows, but for whatever reason, my environment's not showing it properly. So uh, that's bad on me. All right, back to the configuration here. All right, so we have now our two reusable settings that we've configured and we can take advantage of in our policy. So now let's go design the Intune policy that we're gonna push out to those devices. So we're gonna create a new policy, Windows, of course, and then we're gonna do a device control policy here. Okay, and create it. And in this case, I always like to put dev, got anything I'm working on. Specific. 
USB. All right, so this policy is again, kind of come in and block right with allow of specific USBs. All right, I'm gonna go edit that here. And we're now gonna go to device control and go ahead and add this policy in here. So first things first, we're going to add one that says authorized USB. All right, let's add the block first. Block. So we're gonna block that removable media. And then we're going to include specific devices. In this case, the reusable settings is where we're gonna plug in here. So we're gonna target the authorized devices, or sorry, the deny removable storage setting that we did. And then we're gonna edit the instance information in here, All right? And so in here, we're gonna come in and we're gonna deny access to what? Right? Uh, file write and print. I don't think print's actually necessary, but I did it in my environment just as a fail safe of, you know, if I got something wrong. And then we're also gonna add a audit denied policy for those same things in here. So we're gonna come in and again, write, file write and print, just in case on that print setting. And so that's the block policy. So again, back into this dialog here, we're now putting this policy in place and saying, hey, if it matches on any of these things, block it. But we're gonna have this allow authorized device above it level, and that's gonna allow those things. So the allow overwrites the block essentially is what we're doing here. Specific. All right, we're gonna tag that and also add the authorized devices in here. Save that. And then in this option as well, we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, which is allow and write, file write and print on that one. And then, oh, I skipped one. And then we're gonna allow audit also, write, file write and print, print. And so that's essentially the policy that's gonna get us the controls that we designed in here. And we can now come in and assign that out to our users and have it available for testing in our devices. Scope it down to a test device, uh, add that option to it. So that again, that gets us this policy that we designed here. Now, if you want additional configuration on this, so maybe you as an org want to come in and do maybe more device control, maybe you don't want anybody to even read from non-approved devices, we can do that same thing with this policy. What we just wanna do is just duplicate this, and then essentially we're gonna come in and you know essentially make the same thing over again, but we're just gonna adjust some of those check boxes that we did before. So this one is, hey, you know what, we're not gonna allow any write or read, uh, sorry, block execute write with allow, right? And so I should also add this as read here. So let's, let's adjust here. I'm gonna edit the setting. Back to device control. And so again, on here, we would just select more of these options under these instances. So if you don't want anybody to even read from a device, we're just essentially gonna come into this and manage that in kind of this, you know, block option here. Again, for the approved devices, do the same thing. These approved devices, you can do everything on it. Oh, I skipped a couple in here. And so that's essentially how we can design those policies, have it in here and have available. So if you need that option, if you need to manage all USB, like no storage devices will be read from, that's the opposite policy you could do. So that's it from the policy um, design perspective. Um, I hope this helps you out there achieve, you know, the device controls that you wanted to see. Um, I felt this was the easiest way I have found to manage this. There, again, there's other options that you could do and obviously a lot of different other requirements like uh, for managing devices that I, I'm not covering here. But if you need a simple way to block writing to everything except for specific USBs, this could be your jam. So. Um, let me know how this worked for you. Let me know if you ran into issues or ways that I could have done a better job on this. Love to learn from all of your testing out there and options for this. Um, but that's it. Good luck and uh, stay safe out there.